Is it possible for an album to be genreless? We have looked at some fascinating releases on this channel, but today I want to talk about experimental music. I want you to give a very warm welcome to this album right here. Dyer's Hands. Dyer's Hands is, in my opinion, the perfect example, the epitome of experimental music. An album that dedicates itself towards reconstructing the boundaries of what music is and could be. It's a simple concept that is easier said than done, and whenever I dive into specific genres or niche little corners of music on this channel, I'll usually do so by showcasing a couple of albums that represent that style wonderfully. But as you'll soon see, Dyer's Hands deserves its own video entirely. If this is your first time here and you love exploring fascinating music, hit that subscribe button and turn all notifications on, you know the deal, so you never miss a thing. Doing so helps out the channel so much, and I cannot wait to see you around for our next journey into sound. Dyer's Hands was pieced together between 2013 and 2019 by the experimental music duo known as Pedestrian Deposit. The album is a five-track exhibition of audio collaging and sound construction. The album is, in noteworthy similarity to its lengthy creative process, a sound-based journey of struggle and triumph. Many moments crushingly intense and frightening, but survive the difficulties and you'll be greatly rewarded. This is the progression present in much of the material from Pedestrian Deposit. Releases going back to even the 1990s showcases this procedure with moments of intense, explosive, and piercing noise all ominously paired together with complete drop-offs. It's never just a constant noise sound, and it's really fascinating. These scenarios of minimalism popping off out of nowhere to truly bring contrast to the explosions you've previously heard. Contrast, depth, meaning, magnitude to everything. The formula they got over there, it's really good. <laughs> Similarly to Dyer's Hands and its six years of development, this isn't the only time we've seen the production of a pedestrian deposit release to span for years. Releases such as 2009's Austere was recorded and assembled for about five years, construction beginning all the way in 2004. Once a solo project ran by John Borges, Pedestrian Deposit would see the inclusion of Shannon Kennedy on strings in 2008. This addition further elevated the complexity Pedestrian Deposit brought to the table, especially when performing live. Placing this duo under a genre or sound style, let alone the release of Dyer's Hands specifically, is kind of difficult. John and Shannon blend so many different energies and textures together that there is never a defining moment to concretely label them as one thing in particular. This focus on providing a journey for the listener beyond anything else puts the music in a league of its own without the need of a label or genre. Pedestrian Deposit is the perfect example, like I said, of what experimental music truly aims to do, an invitation for the listener to travel into a world with no expectations on where the sound will go next. John and Shannon focus heavily on the bending of instrumentation as well as the physicality of their live performances. It's an opportunity to connect their content with the audiences in a far more memorable sense compared to most traditional concert-going experiences. Many of the instruments used are made of raw wood, metal, fiber, springs, and much more. Shannon's strings have a sort of dual function. They're not only used musically, but they are also used as set and costume pieces with metaphorical meaning. Much of the material found on Dyer's hands stem from these live performances where visual and physical aspects, as well as the interaction with the audience, are such 
an essential factor. We try to avoid being limited by any of those labels. For us, it's more about content, connecting to the audience, and redefining what constitutes music than existing within a certain style. The material that went into the making of Dyer's Hands largely comes from four compositions that were developed over the course of four tours between 2013 and 2017, as well as studio material and live shows spanning all the way until 2019. There's just a lot of stuff packed into this one five-track release. In Shannon's view, this album is a series of excerpts from the narratives of those four compositions, but Dyer's Hands should also be viewed as a single structure made up of just five shorter stories. Noise, power electronics, drone, ambient work. I mean, I can go on and on with what types of sounds are being presented to us on Dyer's Hands. The duo is hesitant to use the word noise to describe what they are creating overall because they feel that the non-noise world perceives the genre to be extremely limiting, eventually leading to possible fans being dismissive of the work coming from these hardworking artists and I can completely understand their feelings on that. For Dyer's Hands and Pedestrian Deposit as a whole, the harshness is just one of the many elements that make up the final product. A product more dynamic than almost anything I've ever heard, I can't seem to give Dyer's Hands a defined genre, so instead, I want you to think of it as a journey, because trust me, that's what it will become for you at the end of the day. There are some very aggressive sounds, a struggle for many to overcome, but once tackled, allows you to grow and expand your musical palette. There is a beauty and order hiding between the layers and layers of sound, and it is our goal as the listener to find our own sense of significance and clarity. Rewards for powering through these obstacles include softer cello melodies and euphoric ambient soundscapes to wash away the dirt and debris, a pleasure made so much more intense through the endurance of suffering and struggle, as Shannon likes to put it. The album relies heavily on the importance of contrast. It's a theme throughout much of the live performances and much of the music coming from the duo. It's a practice that allows you to appreciate each individual aura or musical setting to such a high degree. And when you have such an extreme intensity of one style and then shift to another, you just, I don't know, it's just, it hits you so much harder. And this duo on Dyer's Hands does it so beautifully well. Let's actually just break down what we got going on here in the track list and what makes this album lack a true genre. A stimulating way to start this whole thing off, track number one, Crow Theory, begins with these simple strings plucking at you, all while something ominous brews gradually in the background. Before you know it, the track has hit its initial ascension and just throws you off like that first drop in a roller coaster. Blistering, crushing, no holds bar noise manipulation with some contrasting cuts and breaks throughout the remaining body of the song until we hit a healing zone, a temporary place of self restoration as the last minute or so of the track gives us a moment to catch our breath with some much refreshing drone work. This track is a great example of how rewarding music can be, specifically, when you use noise, you know, and it's just not constant noise the whole time, but you give it cuts and breaks and drop-offs and you just provide this insane tension you can cut with a knife and then it's just silence. It's beautiful. It's this hydration for your ears after that session of chaotic punches. It just allows you to appreciate all the different styles of sound available to us in this world. And this track, perfect for that. The drone outro from Crow Theory then leads us into the second track, What Can't Be Given, which starts off with Shannon's beautiful, almost ancient sounding string work. As we venture further into the track, angelic pads come into play, elevating these rich strings even more, a complete 180 from the first track. Highly meditative, this song further adds to the swaying dynamic of this album, which I could see as more of a score to a movie than an album. I picture scenes of two people sailing in an endless ocean, desaturated colors and weathered clothing. A film with no dialogue will just let the setting do all of the talking. We begin track three by returning to a more treacherous world. August starts with this sort of electronic distorted breathing as more swishy sound work fills the surrounding background. This track is pretty minimal at its core, an interlude that foreshadows what is to come. Sounds get sharper towards the end and provides you with the tunnel 
leading into tracks 4 and 5. And boom, we're back into more noise with track number 4, What Can't Be Taken. Just as destructive as our intro track, only with no warning at the beginning of it, John takes advantage with range as he provides this harsh slice of buzzing noise work to only have it immediately cut off into a field of silence. After a little bit, you'll start to hear chains and other metallic objects rattling in this empty void of audio, and this is Shannon in the live, you know, realm doing her thing over there. And soon after, these sharp, bright pads, they're back to shine a light in this dark, musty room you find yourself in. The blend of noise music and smooth, traditional ambient music can be breathtaking. I can't say it enough. And it's really good for people who just can't get into straight noise. And like I was saying earlier, they don't like to label themselves as noise. And it's a smart move. And I think many people get turned off by just knowing, all right, I'm going into this, you know, goddamn just loud noise fest. This is not that. It's, it's beautiful. Each sound completely different in volume and velocity. But they just... It, they provide so much therapeutic clarity. I don't know, sometimes I like to, like, right now I'm reading off of a script. You guys know how I write my videos, but then sometimes I just like to keep going, and I, yeah, I just can't stress enough this power that they have bending sound, and I just wish more people did it. Pedestrian Deposit proves that the prism of a musical sensation isn't a straight line at all, but a circle. And finally, the closing track, Beneath the Salt. This almost 20 minute epic ends the album on an incredibly invigorating note, a feast inviting everything we've heard thus far. Indulge yourself in the strings, each with a different personality, some angelic while some are disturbingly chaotic hiding deep within the walls of the song. You want more noise? Well that's here too, causing a ruckus and smashing its fists. I really don't think table manners fly around here. Melodies we've seen earlier on the album take a seat here as well. Take the latter parts of the track as a complimentary dessert, a way to thank us for spending some time with this enigmatic family. This finale track is beautiful. It is the perfect ending to a journey for those seeking thrill and experimental music. A wonderful sample plate of audio that stretches its limbs into the far corners of sound design. I find the entirety of Dyer's hands to be extremely, extremely inviting. This five track collection is a world that may seem intimidating on the surface level, but just like many people's fear with spiders, remember, these instruments are just as scared of you. These sounds feel wicked, delicate, and sparse, and want nothing more than to just simply show you the world they come from, and I really think they deserve your attention. It feels like any sudden movement will scatter all these instruments into a billion different directions, all returning to the cracks in your wall. It is such an amazing album to listen to, plain and simple. To me, these compositions are music as a mycelial network with individual hyphae crisscrossing over one another, each emanating a different sound texture. When listening to the organism as a whole, at first one may hear a cacophony of sounds that may seem random, but if you can relax your listening, you hear the patterns and harmonies that come from the individual sound threads being woven instead of at random, and you realize that there is no chaos but a defined functional structure. Sometimes the crossings are beautiful and sometimes excruciating, but always intentional, designed to evoke an emotional, psychological response. Reverse tension noise composition, existing somewhere between electroacoustic music, sound collage, and pure harsh noise, with elements of nearly every style of experimental music in between, visit their Bandcamp page and gear up for the quest ahead. And I'll see you on the other side. Please let me know of any other experimental albums I should check out for a future video in the comments below or any other albums at all you'd want me to explore on this channel. I also invite you to check out my Patreon page if you want to gain access to some cool rewards and exclusive benefits. We have a Club Chennington exclusive Discord server. We're doing so much over there and it's a lot of fun. I'm always hanging out in there and I can't thank everyone enough who has already joined and is helping me out. And lastly, before we wrap this up, a huge shout out, of course, to John and Shannon for taking the time to tell me their story and discussing Dyer's hands with me, as well as another big shout out to Deathwave TV for providing me with this 
incredible live footage of the duo you've seen throughout this video. I'll be leaving links to all of their stuff in the description below, as well as links to some of my other music related deep dive videos, so just a whole bunch of good stuff down there, and uh, make sure you go check it out. And lastly, you already know, thank you for watching this video, and I cannot wait to see you around for another exploration into fascinating music. We'll talk soon. Much love. Your boy, Pat Chennington.